So today we have Mandy McCullough showing us a really cool haircut with a great name, Octopus. And Mandy is a Sam Ambassador Fix Salon owner. She has been behind the chair for almost two decades. 16 of those, she's been a Redken educator. Like I said, she does own a salon called Salon Fix in Seattle, Washington. And her goal is to inspire each and every learner in an inclusive way. So please, in the chat, let us all welcome Mandy McCullough. Good morning. Thank you so much, Andrew. Oh, wait, such a great uh, intro. And also, Andrew, I want to give a big shout out. You guys have the that new lead-in reel to this with all those great looks. I was just doing some post-production on that. I am so proud of all the work to see that the Zambia ambassadors and Sam did on those haircuts. And um, I'm looking forward to letting everybody else see what they have. But that just looks so beautiful as that lead-in reel. That was really great. But thank you so much for having me here. And yes, the octopus cut, you might have heard about it. You're like, what in the world is this octopus haircut all about? I have no idea. You might have seen some pictures. You might love it. You might not be sure about it, but today we're going to talk about it. So in the chat, tell me, where do you live with this octopus haircut? Are you into it? Are you feeling it? Are you still wrapping your head around? Let me see in the chat. How are you feeling about this octopus cut? We're going to get right into it today. Let me see. Oh my gosh. Good morning to everybody. Oh, Katie and oh, Katie's saying hello to Spain. Yes. Good, good, good. Hi. Good. Perfect, you guys. Type in the chat bar. Let me know how you feel about the octopus cut. I'm going to start in on this first. Then we're going to kind of step back and look at some images so we can talk about how we can create variations of this cut. Here's what I have to get us started. So with my client today, what I did is I sectioned my client at the parietal ridge. I'm going to comb this up so you can see what I have going on here. They're secure. Elevate this up. Now, notice this is sectioned at the parietal ridge with a little bit of difference. So that being, look at how this tilts as it comes back into the crown. So do you see, let me get that angle in there. So parietal ridge, but then we're going to dip this down just a little bit in the parietal ridge right there. Now, everything below that, I don't want to cut at all. So I just secured it with an elastic, super easy, tucked out of the way. Then I'm going to let all of this drop on top. This haircut has tons of interior length taken out. So we really want to make sure there's control over that. And I want control over where that line of graduation starts. You know, the whole point of this octopus cut is that the top of it looks like the body of an octopus and the ends look like the legs of the octopus. So we have a really strong silhouette that comes in and hugs the head shape and then S or I should say C shapes out into those octopus legs. So I'm going to come back now and release this top section. Everything underneath has been isolated with an elastic, so I can keep this section really clear. Now, this is really where we're starting the octopus body. So I really want to have control over this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to section out her fringe. So let me see. Oh, I see Simone saying tentacles are feeling, especially with high fashion color. Color really makes this come to life. I absolutely agree with that, Simone. So yeah, thank you for putting that in. Um, okay, so first I'm just going to isolate out the fringe area. This, we're just gonna go back to some principles. If I place a comb on the outside corner of the eye, so it makes a vertical line up to the head shape where that connects with the hairline is where I isolate that fringe area. So here you can see if I place a comb outside corner of the eye, vertical line, rock that up to where it connects to the hairline, that's the outside corners of my fringe. That's based on natural fall. It means that this hair will literally fall straight forward so it's the cleanest, most accurate place for us to get the fringe. Same thing on the other side, coming through. I'm gonna take a little test section for myself here. Then I'm gonna come back and check. Let me get this out of the way. Make sure you can see. Vertical line, rock it up to the hairline. I can take that out a little bit wider. And let me clean up my center part for you. There we go. And then isolate the fringe. The fringe is a separate story from where the layers or graduation are going to go in. So I want to make sure that the fringe stays separate. You know, as I go through and as we see trends come up and I start deciding like, okay, so what's my flavor of this fringe? I start to look and see what other people are doing. A lot of people have been starting this in the fringe. It's the first thing they cut. And then all of the layers are based off of the guide length of the fringe. 
that's great. It makes it super easy because it's an easy thing to follow, but you're locked into that guideline. And now this interior has to be at that length. And there's no way to switch it up if your client wants something different, if they have different density, or if they have different hair texture. So we're going to start with the interior and come back to the fringe second versus doing the fringe first and using it as our guide. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm using a razor today. I have pre-prepped the hair with, this is Redkins One United. This is my detangling spur I'm using. So I want to make sure I have that through the hair because I am also going to be using my Zambia razor today. There it is. And what I want to do is make sure you always have a fresh blade whenever you start with this. So this is really nice. This is the multi-pack of blades. I'm going to use the straight edge blade with a guard, which is these gray guys right here. So I'm just going to lock that one off, pop a fresh one on. Okay, fresh blade. Now I'm gonna start in the back. I need to decide where does my line of graduation start? So where is it going to be that where this octopus body starts? That's really what it comes down to. So I'm gonna take a vertical section straight in center back. So vertical section in center back. I'm gonna take the section that I'll show you. So there you can see, there's my vertical line, center back. Now what I'm gonna do, let's see, I think I can turn this so you can see, I'm gonna switch my body position for you. I'm gonna comb this evenly on both sides. Now I have to decide where am I going to drop my section to? Where do I want that octopus body portion to live? That's gonna help me determine my guide. Now I've done this a few times, so I have some hot tips I can share with you on how to get this more accurate. Leave it a little longer than you want. Remember we're cutting with Razor, right? So if you are a razor cutter, let me see that in the chat bar. Let's just type in razor if you're a razor cutter. Because what we know is that shears cut on the outside of our section, but the razor cuts on the inside of our section. So we always have to allow a little bit more length than we think we need to get that uh, guide cut in for us, or it's too short. Now the whole thing's too short from what we promised our client. So when I'm thinking about where I want this octopus body to start, what I'm going to do is drop my fingers. I'm going to take this just below the occipital. So let me get this out of the way here. Let me just clip it for you. There we go. So when I see the hair starting to flip, set just behind the occipital. So here's about the occipital bone right here. Here's my length. This is going to be the length that I'm going to start cutting that hair. Oh my gosh, good. I see so many razor cutters in there. Awesome. This cut is going to be half razor, half shear. So whichever tool you land on, we're going to connect with you on it. Okay, so straight out from where it lives. Now, the other thing that I want to do, checking where that guide is, give myself a little room. With my razor, what I want to do is I want to have a longer stroke versus a short stroke. I want to have a lot of texture in this because I want to have a lot of movement within my shape. So making sure this is elevated straight out then coming in with my razor, nice big strokes through the hair. And I've cut my first line of graduation. Let me hold this up so you can see, do you see? There it is, right? Perfectly starting that octopus body, that rounded shape that follows ahead. Now, all I'm going to do is go around the head shape and just match that guy. So dropping the rest of my hair, come in, take another vertical section. Don't worry, I'm going to show this to you. So here's my next section. See it there? There it is. I'm taking a little bit of my guide from the previous section. Now it comes straight out from where it lives. So there's no over direction. Remember over direction gives us weight and length in the opposite direction. So if I take this section and over direct it to the previous, my octopus body is gonna be lopsided because it's gonna start getting longer as it moves to the front. Now artistically, if you wanna do that, you totally can. But what I feel is like the pure version of this cut is keeping even in consistency in that weight line. So coming through, let's see. Chaz, I have to get ready for work. Can this be saved to watch for later? Great question, Chaz. As a matter of fact, yes, it can. Wherever you're watching this, whether it's on the Sambia YouTube channel or it's on Facebook, yeah, we have this available to you 24-7. It's the beauty of Sambia education 
is that yes, it is going to be available to you, Chaz. So as soon as you're done with work, you can come back to either Facebook or YouTube and you can watch this all over again and pause and go back and rewind all the things. So yeah. So I'm just going around the head shape again. I'll show you. Here is my next section. And because I don't want over direction, my body position stands right in front of this section. So I don't push it one way or the other. I like to come on either side of my section so it stays really clean, elevate it straight out, let that guide, as soon as I start seeing that guide drop out, then I can come in and cut and continue with a couple sections. So this is pretty easy. And I like sometimes starting these haircuts from the interior to the length versus starting with the perimeter first, especially if my clients don't really wanna lose a lot of length. So then this way I can make sure that the interior is more impactful for them when I start. And this is really, this haircut is so much about the interior. Nice, big, loose strokes with Maybelline. Okay, let's look at that. Side. So here's what I have. Just that nice, pretty little starting the octopus body. Now I'm gonna continue over to the other side. All right, here I go. Simone, you have to go to work too. Yeah, that's totally fine. The nice thing about this, if you're on the West Coast, 8 a.m. start time is that this is kind of right before we all have our first nine o'clock client, right? But um, depending on where you are in the world, I'm sure you guys have lots of stuff going on. That's why we record these things so you can come back and watch it later. All right, so I'm coming to the other side. All the same rules apply. Here's my vertical section I'm taking down. There's my vertical section. I wanna make sure you guys can see this. So let me back up a little bit for your light. Wait till my guide drops out. Remember, long strokes with my razor, long strokes with my razor, and drop. Another section. Now, the beauty of isolating the hair from underneath the section out of the way, look how well I can see the weight line build up. I know the consistency is there. I know it's dropping on the head shape where I want it to be. So this is getting me set up to make it all super easy when I go through into the underneath portion. Good, and I just have about two more sections through here that I'm gonna cut. And come on either side, elevate straight out, wait for my guide to drop out there. I just saw a piece drop out, ooh, watch my elevation. I'm using my camera today. You would use your mirror in the salon to make sure that your elevation is staying consistent. Okay. Doing good. Come in. Elevate. Out. Check. Ooh. Yeah. Keep in mind if I had that little bit of elevation above my horizontal 90, what would happen is it would start rounding out a little bit more into my shape. I'm going to balance this to the other side. So that's why I really want to make sure that it's a little bit more square on top and I'm letting the round of the head shape give that roundness nice. Okay, so there we can see, we just put the whole top section. Oh, hi, Bandy, it's nice to see you on here today. So yeah, so there's the section we just put in. Now, we're gonna move to the fringe. Fringe, we're gonna cut a curtain fringe. You know, I think that there are so many different ways to cut curtain fringe. I'm gonna show you my easiest way that I've been doing it in the salon that works pretty good. I think the biggest thing for me that I always have a challenge with is making sure that the length is consistent on one side to the other. Sometimes I get one side to look really beautiful and short to long, and then the other side gets too short or too long. So I'm going to show you what I do with that. I'm going to come this into place. I'm going Mandy, before you jump into the fringe, sorry to interrupt. Oh. Um, were the sections that you were taking through the back, were those pie-shaped sections? Millicent's asking. Yeah, they're vertical sections going like like radially. I, I never know that word. It, taking radial sections. So yeah, if I take this down, literally here, 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 here. So from the high point of the head back, yes, they look like pie shapes, like triangles based on the shape of the head. As I come to the front, they're more like little rectangles. So everybody's coming straight out from where they live. Does that help, Andrew? Yes, awesome. Cool, yep. Straight up from the left. Okay, so within this fringe, I'm taking a small interior section and I'm gonna come in with my razor. I'm gonna split this in half. 
Now, remember with curtain fringe, we want this to be soft. So we're gonna use the tool, first the razor, but then secondly, I'm gonna also utilize elevation. Every time I lift the hair, it always creates a softer effect as it drops down. So coming in with my razor, remember this is the Samvia razor and I have the straight edge blade with guard. So I don't cut myself with it. So that's the blade I'm using. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna decide where I want this length to fall. Curtain fringe, my go-to is the bridge of the nose. I can always clean it up and make it a little bit shorter, but that tends to be a good place that allows for shrinkage once it dries. Once I bring this out, I'm gonna elevate this straight out, and I'm going to change my finger angle just a little bit. So let me show you what that's gonna look like here. Hang on. So I'm gonna change my finger angle so it gets a little bit longer as it goes to the other side. Right? Once I have that in, elevate. Let me go this angle so you can see my elevation. Changing my finger angle. So I'm going to give you a top view. Do you see how my finger angle is getting longer as it goes out? Bridge of the nose is my guide. Remember, the blade cuts on the inside of that. So I want to make sure that I drop my fingers down a little bit. And I'm going to use about a medium stroke through that length. And you can see now we have the interior triangle starts to have that curtain fringe. Just repeat on the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna take this other half of my triangle. Let me go this direction so you can see. So remember my elevation is straight out at vertical 90. And I'm gonna change my finger angle just a little bit. So now I'm getting short to the nose and long as it goes out towards the face. You can see there's my finger angle for you. I can take a little tiny piece of my previous section as my guide. So here's my guide right here. Angle, come in and drop. So now I have the interior fringe. Now all I'm gonna do is take the rest of my exterior of that fringe. So again, let me show you what this looks like. Here's rest of the exterior of my fringe. I'm gonna elevate that and it's gonna over direct to the opposite side of the face. This is where I need that top view camera but Andrew and I don't live in the same state so I can't have him here with the camera to go on top of me. So I'm gonna put this into place and then I'll show you. So now, make sure you have just the previous half of your section there. Come in. So this is what I want you to see. Do you see here's my guide from my previous section? I'm going to still elevate this at horizontal 90, but I'm just going to follow that guide as it goes all the way through. So come in, find my guide, and then with my razor, I can cut into that guide. Now look as we comb that back into natural fall, we start having this really great curtain fringe effect. Do the same thing on the other side. So take the rest of my fringe. Take that and split that in half. Elevate and over direct underneath. There's my guide right there. That's what I want as my guide. Once I have it, I can come in and cut. Now, here's my rule of thumb with razor. When we're talking about length being off by an eighth or a half of an inch, don't mess with it anymore. Wait till it's dry and come clean it up. Razor is perfect imperfection. So we want some imperfection in it. So if we're like, well, I don't know, this side might be a little bit longer on this side. I'm gonna clean it up once it's dry. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep fussing and fussing and fussing with my razor. So just to recap, octopus cut, body versus legs. We're working on the body portion. So we isolated everything below the parietal ridge. Let me just show you my section everything below the parietal ridge, but remember we took a little extra dip back in the crown and we isolated that in an elastic so that we didn't get confused about what our section was. Everything above, we determined where we wanted that length to be and created a guide in center back where it was just past where the occipital lands. Elevated that to horizontal 90 and then cut it and dropped it down. Just straight out from where everything lives, same thing all the way through. Then we came to cut the fringe with curtain fringe. Now, from here, we are going to dry it and everything else will be done on dry hair. So a couple things. 
When you look at octopus cut, I think the thing to notice is we really want to establish a silhouette. We want low volume through the top and we want more movement in the sides and the base. So there's a lot of control to it. So what I did, I'll show you. There she is. So here's what I used. I used two different products. I use Redken's Quick Blowout because this is heat protecting as well as it helps me blow dry the hair faster. But then on top of it, I layered it with Big Blowout. This is inspired by patent leather. It's super shiny, which is what we want on this cut. Look how shiny your hair is. This also gives me control so that as I go through and dry it, I can isolate the silhouette that I want. Sam Via Pow Brush is going to be your best friend. Wide base flexible pins so that as I wrap dry this into place with my blow dryer, notice low volume and I can, hold on, I'm going to get my blow dryer. Blow dryer with a nozzle. As I blow dry this, I can keep this close to the head shape and it's going to come out smooth. One, because I've chosen the right product, but two, because I'm using a wide base paddle brush and a blow dryer with a nozzle to stay in control. So this was a wrap dried effect that I did on this whole haircut. And this is how we get this effect. So now you can see here's my curtain fringe and you can see how we're building the body of our octopus. So now here's, let's do this. I want to go back, Andrew, let's look at that first picture that I gave you. Let's pull that up. And this is, this is the haircut that we're doing. This is the octopus cut. Notice the silhouette octopus body on the top and then it carves out on the interior and you have the legs. Now, the most extreme version of this, there's a lot of carving out in the middle and there's, you know, PC little legs. I wanted to leave a little bit more hair. This is actually my operations manager, Cynthia. I wanted to leave some more depth so she didn't feel like she lost all her hair. So we're going to talk about that. But whenever I see a new shape and I have to decide how am I going to cut this, I start looking at the silhouette. So now let's look at the second image. So with the second image, you'll see here's literally the outline that we put into this shape. Andrew's pulling it up. So once Andrew gets it up, here's what I'm Sorry, doing. I'm having a little issue getting the second image. Just as soon as you have it ready, Andrew, I'm going to, um, I'll talk to it. So in the meantime, as Andrew's pulling that up, here's what I want to show you. Now, from my profile, I have a body, but I don't have the carve out there in that silhouette, right? It's missing. So we need to make that happen. And I want to clean up her length and her perimeter. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this hair in panels, starting in the back. And let's just start in center back and make it easy. So my client's facing. Now, what I'm going to do is take a panel and I'm going to comb this straight up, elevate this straight up to vertical 90. Make sure my client's not going to go anywhere. Use the wide teeth of your comb to help detangle quickly. Okay, so now we're going to determine length. And here's why this is such a good cheat of how to make this happen fast. Here is my guide from the top portion above the parietal ridge. Here's the length I just pulled up. All I have to do is point cut in to get the perimeter length to start matching in with my interior length. So elevating this straight up to horse or to vertical 90 now. Coming in, let's turn this this way so you can see. All I'm gonna do is come in. Now these are the Sam Via six and a half inch dry cutting shears. This is what gives me the ability to really get my shears in there and point cut to that length. And we're gonna drop. I have it ready for you now. Okay, great. So let's pull that picture up. So now you can see, here's how I start looking at this. Like, okay, so you can see where the blue line is, we're squaring it off. That's why this came straight out from where it lives. Uh, we did horizontal 90 in the top. Now what we need to do is we really need to get that to curve and hug in. This is where like the octopus body is really starting to round out. So we have to think, what are the principles of hair cutting that help us do that? So that's what we're gonna get into. So when you see a new shape, I'll just tell you, I put this on my iPhone and I use markup and I literally outlined the shape and it helped me start to wrap my head around where I need to go to get to that end result versus I could just blow this dry and I could whittle away at it with my shears until I see what I want to have happen. But that's going to be like three haircuts before I'm done. OK, so that's great. Thank you so much, Andrew, for bringing that up. Now, I'm going to continue through the, through the head shape with these panels. 
taking them up, switching over to the wide tooth of my comb, elevating to vertical 90, all the way up. I can look and see, not much there, but there's a little bit. Go ahead and cut that off. Drop, turn, section, straight up. Just so you guys can see, there's my length from what I cut on top. Here's the length that I'm matching it to. Come in and cut. And my last section on this side. Notice how quickly we can work through these sections. When we do this, these are called compressed sections. It means that we are taking large sections of density at a time and working smarter, not harder. So again, let's just see this. Here's my interior. Here's my perimeter. Compressed sections come through and cut. And I'm going to complete this on the other side of the head. Up. Not much right there. And come over to the side. I started the top of this haircut, we're really just establishing a guide. So it makes it that much faster for me versus having to guesstimate every time, what am I doing within that shape? Okay. All right, let's see how our silhouette's doing. Here's what we just did with the silhouette. So we're starting a little bit, not quite. We have one more step before we get that C shaping in. But look at the perimeter and the tendrils that we're getting through here, right? We're starting to get that really nice soft wispiness down through the bottom, which is exactly what we want. Now, if I want to, I can keep my client's length this long and leave this, or we can have a conversation. And at the end, I'm going to cut the perimeter to where we maybe want it to be. So there's a little bit more strength, but I like this shape. Now, also notice this, and I think this is an important thing to talk to your clients about. Notice what's happening on the side. Do you see how wispy this is? Octopus cut in its true form, this gets really PC down here. It's important in your consultation that you have that conversation with your client and explain that to them. This is where visual connection is really important. So you want to make sure that you have pictures that you're showing them and say, are you comfortable with this or do we need to adjust the cut so you have some more density down in the base of your haircut? So important things to think about whenever we do these trend-focused cuts. Do they want the extreme version of the trend or do we need to adapt it so that it fits what their lifestyle, their comfort level is? All right, we're going to come back to our vertical sections. now. I'm going to come back to Redken principle based design because we have some really straightforward ways to remember how to control the silhouette. When I elevate hair straight up and cut it layers, we get straight graduation. You can see this is pretty straight right here, but we did that because we needed to start establishing our perimeter. Now I'm going to go to what we call scooping elevation, which it sounds you, some of you might be like, I have no idea what scooping is. Don't worry because once I do it, you'll be like, Oh yeah, I do that every day in the salon. Now what I'm going to do is elevate this so it's about 45 degrees. Do you see? 45 degrees. And then I'm going to change my finger angle, and I'm going to start cutting and connecting this portion right here. When we come through and elevate the hair to 45 degrees, come through, I can extend and do that some more. What it does is it gives us a concave shape. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. I'm going to turn this so you can see. Now we're going to start getting that carved out shape. So the key is to elevate this to 45 degrees, change your finger angle to maintain length. And now we're going to start seeing that scooping out portion. So just like I've done through each section of this haircut, these sections all come straight out from where they live. Elevate into that scooping graduation and cut more of that interior out. Coming through, cut. Now let's check it. We're really starting to see this happening in the hair shape, which is great. So I'm going to keep working around my sections. Here. Elevate to 45 degrees. Cut it in. 
Yeah, do you see we're really starting to see that shape open up? And now I'm gonna to continue to the other side. So remember we started this on wet hair and the whole first section above the parietal ridge, we elevated straight out to horizontal 90 and established our guide. Then dried the hair and we took panels, vertical panels of compressed sectioning, elevated it straight up to vertical 90 and cut to start establishing our perimeter line. The third step is now coming into swelling, or sorry, scooping graduation, meaning I'm taking this hair 45 degrees, changing my finger angle, cutting into it, so I start seeing my scooping silhouette. Now, let's look and see where we are so far. Here's where we are in this haircut. Notice we have, let me find it for you, the octopus body, right? The octopus body is fitting in there and we have the octopus legs. But I wanna take a little bit more of this out. So now we're gonna start customizing and personalizing it to their texture, to their density, to their head shape. So here's what's gonna happen next. Now, cool directional techniques. Thanks, Candace. that's nice of you to say. All right, guys, if you don't know these, you should. Zambia Artist Series Slide Cutting Shears. I'm gonna hold these up. Do you see how there's that curved blade? curved blade. This is perfect for dry cutting when we want softness, but we want to remove weight. So now I'm going to come through and start carving more of the shape out. So coming in, let me see about the easiest way to do this for you. I think this is going to be I want to just start carving more of this interior. So I'm going to come in with my shears and start carving that out. And I can even scoop my shears as I go to help me with that concave shape that I want in the, in the haircut. Uh, if you have somebody who has really high density hair, tons of hair, really thick hair, this is what's gonna really amplify that octopus shape to it. All this detailing that comes in later. And I just keep, putting, wow, look at that, right? Now we're really starting to see that shape open up. So pretty. And keep patting it into place, shift the hair as you want to see it. And we can see how we're starting to get really nice octopus body happening. All right, so I'm gonna just keep working through, making sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Open that up. Cut. Cut. So with octopus haircut, I think for those clients who have had the shag, right? And maybe they were in the front of the trend. They were the client who wanted the shag from the very beginning, right? Like they're your trend setters. These are going to be your first, first clients you want to approach about doing this octopus cut on. I think you could also minimize, but get the same silhouette and utilizing all scooping graduations. So if I elevated all of this to 45 degrees, cut it, I'm going to get a much more minimal version of this with more of an even perimeter. So how do you create variations of this hair cut so that it fits every single one of your clients? Now, here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna take this a little bit more because if I look at the silhouette, I want this to tuck in a little bit more. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back and clip off from the parietal ridge we did before. Now we're gonna do a little bit of disconnection in this section. So I'm gonna carefully flip this out of the way section clip out of the way. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this back into scooping graduation and I'm going to do even a little bit more. I'm going to use these artist series slide cutting shears to do it. Now what I'm doing with this disconnection just through the back and really through back center and either side of back center. I'm not going to get to the corners because we'll start losing density. In. Now do you see it's almost like I'm creating uh, like I always want to say a bustle right like from the olden days but I feel like that's not relevant 
I don't know, we're creating a foundation form underneath. So now when this lays on top of it, it's going to help support and give us even more. Oh, yeah, look at that, right? These are the things we need to visually connect with. Every client, based on how much the hair they have, what their hair is doing, this is going to be different. So once we get the foundation of the cut in, then we go back and we start personalizing this to say, based on the type of hair they have, how are we going to get that look for them? So let's start looking and see what we have in the front here for you. Oh, she's looking so cute. Nice. Okay. So coming into this shape, I can start, oh yeah, really playing with that. Now I want to start playing with this front, really have some control over what's happening here. So I'm going to come back in with my slide cutting shears with the curved blade, and I'm going to turn her this way, and I'm going to tilt this down a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Here we go. And I'm going to just open this up a little bit. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut. And cut. And cut those Mandy, in. great question from Sonia. What is the benefit of doing these disconnected haircuts? What what difference does disconnecting make? Oh my gosh, Sonia asked that question. Great question, Sonia. So here's the benefit of this. When I want a really strong silhouette, let's just say if I have a client with tons and tons of hair, if I put that silhouette in, it might be like the silhouette times 10, it might be so expanded and it might be hard for the client to style. So if I go underneath the outside of the silhouette and if I remove weight from the inside in a strategic way that supports the foundation of the silhouette, so if I did scooping graduation on the outside, I need to do scooping graduation on the inside so it supports the silhouette. So it gives me the same shape that I want, but it brings it in closer to my client's head. It's gonna make it way easier for them to style as well. So we use disconnection a lot when we want to get the shape closer. Now, if I had a client who didn't have a lot of hair, I'm not gonna to wanna to use so much disconnection inside because it's gonna to get too flat and actually might reverse and start getting, uh, like we might totally lose the silhouette altogether because it's too flat. So I hope that answers your question, Sonia. So now I'm going to come over to this side and we're going to just, this is just visual, just cut these pieces in. And what I'm doing is I'm starting to cut into the perimeter, but I want to, you know, octopus cut in its true form is not a hard, clean line. It's very piecey. So that's why a curved blade shear really works to my benefit to come in and establish a little bit of a stronger weight line or PC bits without having that hard line across. So you can kind of see how we're getting those bits in there. And I'm gonna keep working around the head shape. And I'm just kind of pinching with my fingers. Let's do this here. Pinching with my fingers and then talking my curved bladed shears through the length. to get that silhouette. Now, what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up with shorter in the front and it's gonna get longer as it goes back. That's the perimeter shape of this haircut. So as we go through, we can check it one more time. Do this, check the shape, really pretty. Oh gosh, she looks really cute. So here is our whole octopus shape. Of course, now I wanna kind of pull it together with some product. We need something that's going to keep movement in it. I think movement is what we're really gonna see and it's gonna be really relevant as we work through shapes this year. Nothing's gonna be, um, you know, like so blown tight into place. So here I am loving, I'm addicted right now to Redskins Triple Dry 15. This is a combination of dry shampoo with hairspray, texture spray. So it's perfect for these looks. So I can lift the hair up and spray this into the interior. It has just enough moisture to it when it comes out that I'm gonna be able to control where I want this to go. But that airiness and texture of the product really is gonna help emphasize all the interior texture we did in this haircut. So now get that in, get a little bit in our fringe. Now I'm going to put that into place. There, let's make her fringe. And this is her big moment, right? So let's make sure she looks great. Oh, cute girl. Good, and let's check the back. Let's get that into place. 
out some of those textury bits, but of course we want to make sure that we get that silhouette in there for her. Oh my gosh, you guys, octopus cut. There we have it. Super simple, basically three steps. Remember we started in the beginning, I still have her, put the hair out of the way, work with the top. We're gonna to work from the top down. Then dry the hair, elevate vertically to get the perimeter in, and then elevate into 45 degrees above the horizontal 90, which is scooping, which is going to start giving us this concave shape. So I'd love to know how you feel about the octopus cut now, right? Your clients are gonna be talking about this, so have a starting point of no, is this gonna be a fit for them? What do we do to adapt it so it works for them? Be able to speak to it. I think this haircut is gonna be on the tip of everybody's tongues for the next few months, and we're definitely gonna have clients who wanna use it. So awesome for all of you who tuned in today to be a part of it, so now you guys can be leading this trend on this haircut in the salon. Absolutely. And this is really cool. It's super fun. It actually kind of is a bit of a throwback too, because we started to see this like late 90s, early 2000s, like TG and Tony and Guy was doing some of this stuff that was, you know, kind of graduated up here and all tenderly down towards the bottom. And so yeah. this is cool that this is, it, this feels really fresh. Totally coming back. I agree, Andrew. And I just think, you know, there's always these shapes that we get re-inspired by, and it's just important that we modernize it so it fits in with today. And this is definitely one of those shapes. For sure. Thank you so much. Your education is always so fantastic, so well explained, so easy to follow. We really appreciate you, Mandy. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Andrew. I'm always so excited to be here with you and everybody else who joined Sam via Live Education on these Mannequin Mondays.